Hello everyone and welcome to SauceGuru, your ultimate destination for all things Salesforce. Today, we've got a special treat for you. We've curated a list of the top Salesforce trigger interview questions with expert answers, all designed to supercharge your knowledge and interviewing game. We want you to feel not just prepared but absolutely confident when you walk into that interview room. But before we dive into this goldmine of knowledge, do us a quick favor, smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We've got loads of valuable content coming your way. All right, let's get started. What is a Salesforce trigger? A Salesforce trigger is a piece of Apex code that executes before or after specific data manipulation language (DML) events occur, such as before object records are inserted into the database, after records have been deleted, etc. Triggers are used to perform custom actions before or after changes to Salesforce records. Can you explain the difference between before and after triggers? Before triggers are used to update or validate record values before they're saved to the database, whereas after triggers are used to access field values that are set by the system and to affect changes in other records. The records that fire after triggers are read-only. How do you prevent recursive triggers in Salesforce? To prevent recursive triggers in Salesforce, you can use a static variable. The static variable acts as a flag, which you can set in your trigger. When the trigger is called again due to recursion, you can bypass your logic based on the flag's value. What are governor limits in Salesforce, and how do they affect triggers? Governor limits in Salesforce are runtime limits enforced by the Apex Runtime Engine to ensure that code does not monopolize shared resources. If a trigger exceeds these limits, it is terminated and rolled back. Therefore, understanding and coding with these limits in mind is crucial to developing in the Salesforce environment. What does it mean to bulkify a trigger in Salesforce? Bulkifying a trigger in Salesforce means making sure the code properly handles more than one record at a time. When a batch of records initiates a DML operation, a single instance of the trigger is executed, so the trigger needs to handle all records in that operation. Can you discuss some best practices when writing triggers? Some best practices when writing triggers include Always bulkify your triggers to handle multiple records. Use collections, list, set, map, to store data. Avoid SOQL or DML statements inside for loops. Avoid hard-coding IDs. Use trigger context variables. Write test classes for triggers covering positive and negative scenarios. Modelarize your code by using helper classes. How do you test triggers in Salesforce? To test triggers in Salesforce, you write test classes and methods. In the test methods, you create test data and perform DML operations that invoke the trigger. You also use system.assert methods to verify the trigger's behavior. How can you call a batch class from a trigger? While it's not recommended due to potential governor limit issues, you can call a batch class from a trigger using the database execute batch method. A better practice is to use a queuable or future method to handle asynchronous processing. When would you use a trigger instead of workflow, process builder, or flows? You would use a trigger instead of workflow, process builder, or flows when dealing with complex business logic that cannot be handled by these declarative tools or when you need to create or manipulate records related to the one being processed. What is Trigger.new and Trigger.old in Salesforce? In Salesforce, Trigger.new is a list of records that are being inserted or updated. For an insert operation, Trigger.new contains all new records. For an update operation, it contains new versions of the records. Trigger.old provides the old version of records before they were updated, or the records that have been deleted. It can be used in update and delete triggers to compare the state of the records before and after the DML operation. What are context variables in Salesforce triggers? 
Context variables in Salesforce triggers are variables that provide information about the runtime context of the trigger, including the old and new versions of the records, which operations caused the trigger to fire, and whether it was fired before or after the record was saved. Examples of context variables include trigger.new, trigger.old, trigger.operation type, and so forth. Can you write a trigger to prevent the deletion of a record in Salesforce? Yes. To prevent the deletion of a record, you can write a before delete trigger and add an error message to the record. When an error is added to a record in a before trigger, the transaction is rolled back and the deletion does not occur. How can you handle exceptions in Salesforce triggers? Exceptions in Salesforce triggers can be handled using try-catch blocks. In the try block, you write the code which might throw an exception, and in the catch block, you handle the exception. This can involve adding an error message to the record or logging the error for review. What is the purpose of the trigger dot is executing context variable? The trigger dot is executing context variable in Salesforce is used to determine whether the current context for the Apex code is a trigger, not a visual force page, a web service, or an execute anonymous API call. How would you stop a trigger from executing multiple times? To stop a trigger from executing multiple times, you can use static variables. A static variable can act as a flag, which can be set after a trigger executes. Then, on subsequent recursive calls to the trigger, you can bypass the trigger logic based on the flag's value. Can you explain the concept of a trigger framework? Why is it used? A trigger framework is an architectural pattern in Apex which enables developers to manage their trigger logic in a more modular and maintainable way. It often involves creating handler classes that contain the logic for each trigger and then a dispatching trigger which calls the appropriate handler. The trigger framework is used to reduce code duplication, improve code reuse, and enhance maintainability. How do you ensure that your triggers are bulk safe? To ensure that triggers are bulk safe, you must avoid DML operations or SOQL queries inside loops, which can quickly hit governor limits when dealing with multiple records. Instead, you should collect records or data in collections, like lists or maps, and then perform the operations on those collections outside of loops. How would you write a trigger to count the number of tasks associated with an account? You can write an after insert, after update, and after delete trigger on the task object. Within this trigger, count the number of tasks related to each account. Then, update a custom field on the account object with this count. Note that this is a simple example and in a production scenario you would want to handle potential exceptions and bulkify the operation to cater for multiple task updates. Here is a simple example of such a trigger. In this trigger, tasks underscore count underscore underscore C is a custom field on the account object that stores the number of related tasks. Note that the what ID field on the task object is a polymorphic field that could relate to multiple objects, not just account, so in a real-world scenario, you would need to handle this. Also, this trigger doesn't handle bulk operations very well and would hit governor limits if more than 10,000 tasks related to a single account were inserted at once. It's important to consider these factors when designing triggers. When should you use Apex triggers instead of Salesforce's point-and-click functionality? You should use Apex triggers when the business logic cannot be achieved using Salesforce's point-and-click functionality, like workflow, process builder, or flows. This may be due to complexity, the need for logic that spans multiple objects, or a requirement for more control than the declarative tools offer. What is the purpose of a trigger handler class? The purpose of a trigger handler class is to separate the logic of your trigger from the trigger itself. This separation leads to code that is easier to maintain and test. The handler class contains the methods that carry out the operations needed when the trigger fires. That's all in this session guys. Thank you for watching and good luck with your Salesforce interviews. To further enhance your Salesforce journey, consider enrolling for SauceGuru's online Salesforce bootcamps.
where you'll experience hands-on training, tackle real-world projects, and emerge as a true Salesforce champion. You'll find the URL in the description below.